Yo, what up, family? It's your boy, Reverend Stu, and the dopest, amazing, most intelligent, and her should say she's salty today. I'm salty. Oh, she's salty. What, what's you salty about today? What, what are we salty about today? I just spread season throughout the earth. Oh, That's we spread. Oh, you, you salty like, you're like oily. Yeah, I'm oily. Man, like you're oily. Ah, ooh. <laughs> hey, la, 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 see ya. Ay, ay, ay. She say she, say she love the Lord today. Today. See, see, y'all see what my mind is. I, I'm like, oh, you salty. So you, you, what you salty about today? What you angry at? You know, we angry about everything as people. Oh my gosh, no, I just leave yeah. the flavor. Yeah. That's it. I dig it. <laughs> I dig it. You know, I, I actually read something today, um, which actually could lean well into what we're talking about today. Mm. So this period past Thursday, um, one of one of the most important composers of jazz music. Um, passed away who who was an incredible incredible person uh he was a part of starting um the mouse davis quartet uh he was a pioneer in jazz music and composition he was a tenor saxophonist uh there was nothing that uh wayne shorter didn't do uh, and, I, and i read the uh, npr uh, i said npr the uh, new york times profile on him um, and it said that it said that he added color uh, to jazz oh you know and and just i think about like i think oh. about like it, it immediately took my mind to when i was working on a project and i got two type of uh images mm -hmm. one was black and white and one was color i gave it to jazz i said yo babe what you think about this based on the story that i wrote and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera how you how you like this like the black and white is okay it just looks bland mm -hmm. but like the color like allows you to see different aspects of this image it mm. brings out different things like Wayne Shorter did when it comes to like jazz music so mm. it's like you know he probably was improvising on the on certain things or playing around the beat or oh, yeah. like all of these things that that in musical theory that you do to like expand something and change it and make it better which I think I think that's what Christians should be about is that Amen. you know to be salty to be oily yeah you know, is to mm -hmm. is to stand in our world mm -hmm. and to look out at it and try and bring some type of color, color in the sense of some type of aliveness and life. Uh, John ten ten, which actually mm -hmm. I was talking about this. I was actually talking. I was going. We was going to get to this question at some point, and that might be a great place to start as we're thinking about discipleship, particularly uh, mm -hmm. in the black church. And really, I think. You know, I really think the world moves at the pace of black creativity, black ingenuity, mm -hmm. black life, black art, like that the world don't move without black folk, mm -hmm. you know? So I think, us. oh, 100%. <laughs> so I'm like, the world don't move without black. Right. So I'm thinking that like, even as we talk about our particular general, uh, our particular uh, experience mm -hmm. and ideas about the discipleship in the black church, I think that that particular experience can also speak broadly uh, to any yeah. uh, context um, that yeah, that we find ourselves in. Um, discipleship is discipleship, 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 no matter where you find it. We're all being discipled into something or we're being discipled out of something. Oh, yeah. We're all learning something. We're all inside of a context. It's always happening to us, whether we are in the morning listening to NPR. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting discipled by NPR, whether we're listening to Kendra Lamar or mm. listening to Cardi B or listening to Meg Thee Stallion or listening to whoever, That's you know, or, or Miles Davis or listening to... Uh, on a prayer call. Hey, fat, yeah. on a prayer call. Yeah. You know, you had to ring me back just now. I was about to start... You had to ring me back. You had to ring me back. Listening to Kirk Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, yeah, because we're talking about discipleship today, right? And what is a disciple? Is yes. it is a learner or a student? Mm. But when we realize, I like how you said that. Like we are being discipled in so many ways. Everyone, everywhere, is a disciple of someone or something. Facts. Period. Facts. Right. And I think we don't really look at it that way, um, but we are. Whether we are in our community, you know, we're on our jobs, we're at church, wherever we are discipling someone now let's just be specific about discipleship now it's a whole difference right so when we think about discipleship as it relates to jesus right um it's still a disciple is a learner or a student or a follower mm. of jesus christ mm -hmm. let's be specific specific about what we're talking about because everyone everywhere is a discipler of someone or something 
Mm-hmm. But there's a difference because what is a disciple? Um, what is a Jesus disciple? Right. Right. We still are learners and students, but we're following Christ. And then we're still leading others to him. And I wrote something down, like, according to Jesus, a disciple is a person who, number one, is following him. Mm. He's the head, mm-hmm. right? Number two is being changed by Christ. Mm. That's the heart, is living the mission of Christ. So we are the hands and the feet of him. Mm-hmm. But then he le- and then we lead others to do the same, mm. like creating these healthy relationships where people want to be right. discipled by us, right? Mm. Because when we go back to the Bible, the disciple, the disciples, they left everything Mm -hmm. to follow him. So in that short amount of time, however much time he spent with them, he created, number one, psychological safety with them. Mm -hmm. But then number two, he developed and they had these relationships where they were willing to leave things behind Mm -hmm. to follow him. Mm -hmm. That's that health part, right? So I think when we really and truly think about discipleship I like how you started it off we're being discipled in many different ways Mm -hmm. but we still have to be careful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on who we are allowing to disciple us to oh that's facts that's facts so that reminds me of um I was recently reading a book uh lately it's been an amazing an amazing challenge to my brain and my heart as a creative as a writer there's this book entitled the creative act uh, way of Being uh, mm. by Rick Rubin, who's a mastermind of a producer, who's an amazing, amazing, brilliant, brilliant human being who has his, <laughs> I mean, he, he probably got his hands in music that like, he's somewhere, mm. like his influence on music is, is just like irrefutable, mm. his, his influence on music. And I mean, all types of time. And I was listening to him talk about a conversation he had with Johnny Cash and, um, and and just him noticing Johnny Cash and 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 Johnny Cash being at the end of his career, kind of a, a dry season of his career, and him trying to resurrect, you know, Johnny Cash's um, uh, his career by just going in and being like, "Yo, let's just create what we feel. Let's just do mm. whatever we feel. You know, let's let's not worry about like the crowd or not really worry about you know the perfection. Not, let's not worry mm. about all of those things. Let's depend on what we feel in our gut." and allow that to speak to people. Mm -hmm. And the way he spoke about it is, he calls it the vessel and the filter. That each one of us, I have my mug here, shout out to Jonathan Majors, uh, who actually talked about this, I think on Good Morning America, or Mm. in his recent interviews, uh, that he keeps his mug on him uh, to, to, to remind him that like, this is my cup. And I'm responsible to take care of what enters my cup, Mm -hmm. what enters my life. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. Mm -hmm. Love that idea. Um, And it's really the embodiment of what, you know, Rick Rubin is saying. We all have a vessel. We all are a vessel. We all have a filter that, that, that is deposited into that already has things in it. And we filter those things trying to bring the best things out in the world and trying to really, you know, be, be, be like honor the source he calls it the source to honor the source the source of our creativity the source of our ingenuity mm. by taking care of the vessel and the filter and i think you know it is important like to be mindful mm-hmm. of what goes into your cup mm-hmm. social media so just imagine this right you get up you say okay t- last night you went to bed you was like tomorrow is going to be a happy and healthy day okay wrote down your affirmations okay you got because you love the lord you you got down on uh, you, you you got down and did your prayer uh you you, you like my mom my mom got this little prayer cough oh, put okay. the prayer cloth on your head on your head <laughs> yeah. what that uh you pray you got yourself ready you planned your day then when you wake up the next morning it's 4 45 in the morning mm-hmm. your phone already gave you the not- notification that like yo such and such is happening on social media mm. you know, now you got all these notifications now you're flooded by notifications and now you your brain tells you okay go to social media mm. now you go to social media the next thing you see is something that made you mad mm. about what's going on in the world and it threw it 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 just put a little a little toxicity in your vessel put a little toxicity in your vessel stay away from social media <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that, but you know, be mindful. Be you gotta mindful be mindful. And so I think vessel. so. We're thinking about that, like because we know that different things disciple us. So 
and I'm just gonna so we can keep it real. Thanks. I'm not gonna have notifications on that early in the morning. That's right. Notifications ain't coming through until seven a.m. That's good. So to your point, I can allow myself Thanks. to be filled mm-hmm. with what I need to get my day started yes. in a more productive way, right? Um, to command my morning. Mm-hmm. Um, that's important for me. So at 8.30, I don't care if I'm talking to you on the phone, it may shut off on you because my phone's gonna shut off at 8.30. Right. So I'm trying to be done. It's not gonna come back on until in the mornings at seven for me, mm-hmm. right? For my family's a little bit different, but to your point, like making sure that we are mindful of what we allow in, mm-hmm. right? Because we have to pour it back out. Thanks. Discipleship is not only what we receive in, because we all have been called to disciple. Yes. Everybody that's a believer. Thanks. Um, we pour back we pour that back out, whatever mm-hmm. comes into us, right? Um, so we have to be mindful of that. That's real. Because the world is chaotic. Mm-hmm. The world can be beautiful and broken at the same time. Mm-hmm. And we can allow that to mess us up too right so i mean you know hey mm-hmm. be careful of what we allow in us That's real. um jesus was careful who he allowed to be around himself so i think you and i were talking earlier and i mentioned like non-transformational discipleship mm-hmm. so i said discipleship apart from jesus is non-transformational mm-hmm. right so it it can you can disciple someone it can it may can bring a change but essentially it leaves a person in the same spiritual state as it found them. Like if we don't see any, if we're following Christ and we don't see any change. Something wrong. It's non-transformation, but let's be honest about discipleship. It's still a two way. Actually it's three way. Um, I have a part to do. Mm -hmm. We have a part and we're discipling someone. We have a part to play. So we're pouring into them, but they also have a part. They have to receive what we're pouring. They got to be open That's to true. receive it, right? Um, they have to be open to wanting to change. But then God also has a part. God does his yes. part. Yes. Because too often time we can want someone to change. We want them to change because mm-hmm. we know what God did for us, mm-hmm. right? We know how he changed our lives. We know mm-hmm. how he really and truly set us free. So we want this same thing for someone else. But the question really lies in, do they really want it? Mm-hmm. Judas walked with Jesus Mm -hmm. and the other 11. Mm -hmm. Somebody else got in his ear, right? Mm -hmm. So they were pouring into him. Which voice was the loudest? Mm -hmm. That's real. Because, again, I mean, you know, discipleship can be transformational, but it can also be non-transformational as well. That's Um, that's why Romans 12 and 1 and 2 tells us that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, right? Mm -hmm. That's our reasonable service. But he goes on to tell us what, don't be like the world. Mm -hmm. We live here, Mm -hmm. but we can't allow the world to transform us. We have to be Mm -hmm. transformed by what the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. being with like-minded people, being under people um, that that want to disciple us. Mm -hmm. I remember at my home church in Thompson, Mount Pleasant, um, Mother Williams, right? Mm-hmm. Um, some stuff was going on in the church with the pastor at that time. And I was just like, he just wrong. He do-. And she was like, hey, remember, you're human too. Mm-hmm. We're all human. We're flawed people. But when he stands in that pulpit, mm-hmm. is he preaching and teaching God's word? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what you listen to. Not him as a human, like, not, like as a man, mm-hmm. but as the man of God. And that man helped to transform my life Mm -hmm. through his teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be careful, even when we're talking about discipleship in the black church, because we always say what we're not getting Mm. in the black church. Mm. We disciple people. Oh, that's real. We disciple a lot. Oh, facts. But oftentimes you're not paying attention, or maybe we're not discipling you the way you want us to, Mm -hmm. but we don't know if you don't tell us. I don't want it. So, and like, this is where I think the definitions of discipleship, uh, we, we got to decolonize. Let Come me on, debunk. Let, let, let me get you, let me get your word, put this one in your <laughs> vocabulary. Uh, go to your dictionary on your phone or in your house and look up the word decolonize. Mm. Uh, that is, just, just think about, if you don't know what it is, to think about baptism. We, we need to be baptized and be born again. Uh, we need to really, in some sense, throw off uh, some of the language uh, mm-hmm. around discipleship 
or particularly the frameworks um, that we have been socialized into. Okay, let me put on Dante Stewart's sociology major hat okay. real quick. In, soci- in the social sciences, um, there there is a there, there is the principle of sociological imagination. It's actually okay. a book, a classic text. If you're a sociology student um, on the undergraduate or graduate level, you probably more times than not you're going to get introduced to this book mm-hmm. called the Sociological uh, Imagination uh, by C. Wright Mills, um, which argues uh, that 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 we 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 live on two levels. It's not rocket science. We live on our individual level, mm-hmm. and we live on our societal level. Mm-hmm. And mm, you know, mm. pers- like like those things inform one another all the time. Mm-hmm. So we all come from a social location. Mm-hmm. So your social location is where you exist mm-hmm. as a person. Your family structure, your church structure, your civic organization, your every educational thing, whatever is demographically true of you, that is where you exist in. Now, that environment, so we could just talk about what we usually call that is your environment, okay. really. Right. Uh, your your environment, your church environment, your church home, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, that environment has social rhythms mm. in it. So you go to mm. worship on Sunday. Yeah. You meet throughout the week. It has social rhythms. And those social rhythms, in turn, uh, forms your social values. Okay. So those rhythms, as you're listening to people, you're being around people, you're learning new things, you're unlearning certain things, those things in turn shape your social values. Then your social values Mm. in turn shape your social priorities. Mm. So you have your social location, your environment, where you come from, and that environment has rhythms. So in my house, as a young kid, Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday mornings for church. Uh, Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, Bible study. You know, Fridays, hallelujah night, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. You know, that that was our thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, So we all have these social locations environments that in turn shape our social Mm -hmm. rhythms which in turn shape our social values which is really about who and what we think are right and wrong what we think is right and wrong who we listen to what we value etc etc and these social values turn into social uh uh social uh uh priorities which lead to what c Wright mills calls the sociological imagination now why did i say all that because it's important for us to understand that our sociological imagination is simply how we name, see, and act within the world based on where we come from, Mm. based on what we value, and based on what we do. That's good. Now, how do we think about that in terms of discipleship? Mm. Because I think that's important. Sociology and theology, or at least practical ministry, you know, or spirituality is important. Ooh, that's good. Um, and I think it, if we can be honest, kind of goes back to our last conversation, right? <laughs> About people that have been hurt in the church mm-hmm. too, right? And that's going to the social part of it, how they view mm-hmm. what what's important to them too, right? Um, oh, Stu, that's good. I don't even know if I really thought about it in that way. I think that if, oh, that's good. Like if we always continue to do what we've always done, we're going to continue to get what we've always gotten, right? Mm, That's real. Right. And I think the current reality of that is some people don't want to be discipled, right? Mm. Number one, because they don't know what it is. Facts. Because if you walk up to someone and say, hey, have you been discipled in the black church? We're talking about the black church. They look at us like, what are you talking about? Facts. Because growing up, many of us, we may not have heard that, yep. even though discipleship was happening. Because yep. we think about small groups. Yep. People think, oh, that's new. That's just for white people. No, yep. when you go to Bible study, that's a small group. Oh, that's real. <laughs> that's right. Let's be honest, bro. I, the way you put that, I just believe that, oh, Stu. 
Let it work on you. It worked on me when I read it. <laughs> Ooh, Stu. Mm. So therefore, we still we have a charge. Yes. Right, Matthew twenty-eight. Yes. Nineteen through like we gotta go and make disciples. Right. So. Yes. Um, it's going to be a, a mindset shift. Yes. Because if it's if if the only thing that's important to us, to what you're saying, our values is showing up on Sunday, only. We, I'm probably gonna get in trouble saying this. We remain just surface. Oh, that's what you're gonna get in trouble for. That's just, just real. We remain there. We our relationship. Yes. Um, with God remains Sunday morning worship. Yes. Right. Sunday morning sermon. Yes. Uh, and with others, surface too. Because yes. discipleship teaches us relationship with other people That's too. True. And our values begin to change. Our environments begin to change. Things we used to do, we don't do it anymore. Things we used to listen to, watch, places we used to go. Like we just don't. When um, our values change, mm -hmm. right? When we look at society for what it is, what it was, and what it can be, I guess. I don't know if that really makes sense. Mm -hmm. But in the context of discipleship, realizing that it's important yes. and we do we need it. I still need, I may be, and there are levels of discipleship, oh, right? Facts. Discipleship oh, making, right? So I haven't always been a parent mm -hmm. discipler. I was a new convert. I was a babe. Right, and, but even though being a parent, because I love discipleship, I love walking with people, I love doing life with people. Um, I still need to be discipled, right. so that's why I still have a disciple person over me that still feeds into me, that pours into me. So therefore, I can continue to do the same. Right. So I remember. I know we're. You know what time it is. I remember hearing Pastor Goodman talk about this years ago like the five steps of discipleship mm -hmm. that Jesus did, right? I do, you watch, we talk. Mm. I do, you help, we talk. Mm. You do, I help, we talk. Oh, that's good. Right. You do, I watch, we talk. Then the last step is you do, someone else watches, we release them to multiply. Because mm. discipleship is multiplication. Yes. Right. Yes. So, Jesus, I'm going to do it for you, 12. You watch me. I'm going to sit back down and talk to you. We ha They had a conversation. The Bible tells us how you did it, right? Then he said, I do it. You help me. Mm. We're going to come back and talk about it. Mm. Going back. Now, you do it. Jesus said, you go and do it. I'm going to help you, and we're going to talk about it. Then he said, you do it. I want to watch you do it. We're going to come back and talk about it. And the last step is like he told, he was letting them, I'm not going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. When I leave, mm -hmm. this is your charge. Mm -hmm. You do it. Everybody else is going to watch. Mm -hmm. We're multiplying, right? Yes. It's important. Yes. I think to what you're saying, if I'm really understanding your sociological <laughs> theology, <laughs> it's important for us in the black church to continue to talk about discipleship, to help our brothers and sisters understand what it is and what it is not, yes. right? Yes. How this will not only benefit and change your life, mm. think about the people you're connected to that you have influence with, mm -hmm. that yeah. you're already discipling. Let's remember, because discipleship is everybody, everywhere has this, is, you know, disciple over someone or something. Mm. The influence, which is a bad mamma jamma, right? Because mm -hmm. that's all Jesus had mm -hmm. was influence. Mm -hmm. This will, can you imagine what the body of Christ mm -hmm. in the black church mm -hmm. would be like if we all, just one person decided we wanted to disciple one person. Mm -hmm. Do we realize how much more in unison we would be? person that have may have experienced someone hurting them in the church yes. if we offer discipleship to that person mm -hmm. do we realize how that
stigma. We're not downplaying that people don't get hurt in the church because they right. do. But do we realize the turnaround, mm -hmm. the um, impact that would be as we began mm -hmm. to really and truly do life with these people? Mm -hmm. Help them understand hurt happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. To be honest with Jesus experienced hurt, right? Mm -hmm. But did he, could, did, do we not think that he was not, even though we knew he knew what Judas was going to do, mm -hmm. did it still not hurt him? No facts. But did he not still continue mm -hmm. until d discipling him, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. You know, one of my favorite books on discipleship um, is by the former Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, in the Church of England. His name is Rowan Williams. A, a deep, deep, deep admiration for this brother. Uh, he wrote a trilogy of books, one entitled Being Christian, mm -hmm. uh, the other entitled Being Disciples, and the last one in the trilogy entitled Being Human. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing trilogy. Short, short books, no more than 120 pages. Okay. Um, which I would suggest everybody, you know, at least... You don't read it, at least have it in your library. You know, it's a really, really good book that, as a black Christian, I've had to contextualize to me because some of the, I mean, a white brother in England, you know, <laughs> what it he really got, you know, it looked way different for black yeah, folks, different. you know, and, and that kind of goes back to your point. You know, discipleship is happening in the black church. It is. Some people, you know, we're using these definitions, even say of someone like mm -hmm. Lauren Williams, we're using his framework, you know, to interpret mm -hmm. our experience and lived experience which for me i see it as you know we're being in conversation mm -hmm. with him so i've been in conversation with his book and one of the things he says about discipleship he call he says discipleship is simply being a dependable presence mm -hmm. i like that a dependable i like that presence mm -hmm. A dependable mm -hmm. presence, right? Like a lot of times, we have s we have treated discipleship as if it's a test that mm -hmm. we have to pass. So discipleship is: Are you showing up for church? Right. <laughs> are you showing up for small group? Are you showing up for prayer call? Are you showing up for prayer meetings? Are you showing up for this and that? And that's not a discount. No. Discount how important it right. is to actually show up. Right. We need to show up to mm -hmm. these things. You know, we really do. <laughs> it helps. We really do. Um, but I love that idea of just being a dependable present because the, the perspective of the question changes. It's not, okay, how can I teach this person? Mm. It's how can I be with this person? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The question isn't, you know, okay, how can I, like, be a member in worship? Mm. But how can I participate in other, in others mm -hmm. growing in their faith and yeah. their spirituality? The question isn't isn't necessarily okay. How am I doing in my knowledge of the Bible? Mm. But how am I embodying the principles and the arc of the story right. in the world that I live in? And I'm telling you, when I read that book, things shifted in me um, because I'm naturally a go getter and a doer, and like you know. Mm arguer i want to i'm very opinionated as a human oh. being i want to prove my point i want to i want to be strong i want to mm. be powerful i want to be wanted i want to be seen and as i processed how deeply destructive i learned how to be a christian from the places i've been mm. shifting my language of discipleship from being an authority mm. being over people Helping them learn the Bible, mm -hmm. Sam's up to, yo, I really want to be a good person in mm -hmm. this. It shifted how I related to myself, how I related to God, and most of all, how I related to other people. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think that, you know, um, being present, like you're saying, availing yourself, and I'm not with boundaries, right? Not with the boundaries. harmony, right? But yeah. when you say to someone, Call me whenever you need me. You have to mean that. Yes. Don't look at your phone. Oh, God, they're calling me again, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the time to say, hey, let's go to dinner. Let's go to lunch. Let's have a cup of coffee. 
just to talk about life, right? And intertwining, we ain't got to beat them down with Bible scriptures and stuff, right? Just intertwining God's word in there in the conversation. I look at discipleship too, as I heard you speaking, sympathy versus empathy. Mm. We can get it confused, mm-hmm. right? Sympathy is a little bit of like, I think Reverend Richardson described it as over in over identification or something. Like if mm-hmm. someone is falling in this mud hole, sympathy is looking over you, all right? Mm-hmm. Right? But when you have this empathy for someone, they've fallen in this hole, you, are, you go down in the hole with them. This is discipleship. Mm-hmm. When you can go down where they are, if they're in the mud hole, be with them in the mud hole. Cause maybe they're not ready to come out. Mm-hmm. You're in there with them in this mud hole. You're having this conversation with them. And guess what? When you're walking out, you're walking out with them yes. and you're not walking out before them. You walking out behind just in case they fall back down. Mm-hmm. You're there to help them out. Right. Mm-hmm. So I envision, I, I like, I like thinking about discipleship different. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just have to show up different for people. It is not, being an authority, as you stated, because we're equal people mm-hmm. care about titles mm-hmm. and status. Mm-hmm. We're equal. Jesus didn't walk around just acting like, oh, I'm the son of God. You know, I'm, I'm. no, he walked with people. He did life with people. He loved people. Mm-hmm. They were upset that you ain't eating with the tax collector. Mm-hmm. He's looking like, why are you not eating with him? Mm-hmm. And that's how we should be. That's discipleship. When we really think mm-hmm. about it, because mm-hmm. he was showing everybody let me do let me show you what it is to be in relationship with people right mm-hmm. to do life with people because when we go back to Genesis was God not the God of relationship mm-hmm. it ain't that he needed Adam right mm-hmm. he's just the God of relationship he was in relationship with them right they didn't realize they were naked they mm-hmm. knew God was coming mm-hmm. they covered themselves up because mm-hmm. they were accustomed mm-hmm. to him coming into the garden mm-hmm. like being with them right so mm-hmm. I think to your point I I absolutely love discipling people. Mm-hmm. You probably would never know that I do it because I just don't walk around bragging mm-hmm. and saying I'm a disciple maker. Mm-hmm. No, but I can. This is what we know. Mm-hmm. People will know you by the fruit that you bear. Mm-hmm. People will talk about you mm-hmm. um, to other people, how you've impacted their life. Right. right. Um, that's discipleship. When you look at how you walk with them, right. how you have influenced them not just by spending time with them, but the way we carry ourselves, mm-hmm. the way we stand in the pulpits too, as mm-hmm. preachers, mm-hmm. people look at that, the way that we treat other people, mm-hmm. people look at that. Mm-hmm. Jesus could have been mean to people. Mm-hmm. He just chose not to. Indeed. Indeed. People Indeed. are watching That's real. and he wanted people to follow him. That's real. Right. That's real. So in conclusion, yeah. in conclusion, the last question that, just like hit my spirit um when you immediately think about a person uh who has discipled you Mm. and helped you who is that person and what's one thing that they have taught you Mm. juicilla story is her name in thompson georgia Mm. at my old church um one thing that she did to help me was to show me. Um, and she didn't even know she was doing it, Stu. Mm-hmm. She showed me um, what it looked like to just be with a person. Like to mm-hmm. to walk with. I'm, I am the teacher that I am today, of mm-hmm. course, because of God. Mm-hmm. But because of Drusilla's story, mm-hmm. how she discipled me, mm-hmm. how she poured into me four o'clock in the morning, getting mm-hmm. up on those prayer calls early in the morning, mm-hmm. um, praying and the way she sat with me mm-hmm. to dissect that word of God. Like, mm-hmm. this is what you got to do. People don't come to hear about you. They come to hear about Jesus. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been so impactful for my life. Mm-hmm. And. I would be forever grateful mm-hmm. for what she did for me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's real. Yeah. Like immediately when I thought about that question, <laughs> like, I mean, we, we all have a lot of people mm-hmm. that, that, that has put their hands on our life within our life. And they have,
have reached too far into our life at places mm. <laughs> or whatnot. Um, but for me, the immediate person, I ain't gonna lie, yo, like, is my boy Jason Reynolds, mm. my bruh, my brother. Um, like, he's he's right. He's my big brother. He's my dog. Uh, my dude. My dude. My dude. My dude. One of the things Jason has taught me um, over this time that we've known one another is like opening your heart as a black man, like, and being honest and vulnerable, mm-hmm. and and being gentle with yourself. Um, I'm not good at that. Mm. Um, I'm not good at like not believing that I'm losing time. Mm. You know, I'm not good at like loving me and mm. like loving the life that I have. Um, and Jason is really who is actually one of the most irreverent, self-proclaimed irreverent people. <laughs> 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 My dog is pretty irreverent. Uh, but I love him to death uh, because he has given me a space to be myself. Mm. And he has sh- embodied like what it looks like to love every iteration of you, even if you don't love every iteration of mm, you. That's good. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, last, I, I want to say this one last thing. You know that guy named Malcolm Mayo? You know him? Yeah. Um, this is what don't I've they, noticed. They call, him Dion? they call him Dion too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. One thing don't that I love. do sound. I think so at Tab too, right? Yeah. I Video? think so. Okay. This is one thing I like. I love about Malcolm though. Um, even if something is wrong or it may be phasing him right, and this is this is discipleship from afar. People look at it. Right. You you don't really know. Right. And, and I admire how, even if he's taking a beating, he just sits there. All right. I'll get it right the next time. I think we look for discipleship in big ways, Thanks. right? Thanks. Um, but I think when you, like Pastor Goodman, disciples me from afar as well, yeah. looking at him too. But I, but when I look at Malcolm, I, I I really do look at him and be like, yeah, hey, how you always just stay this calm? Mm-hmm. But you just never know who's looking at you. Right. So I think sometimes discipleship is not straight up in your face. Yeah. It's just looking at how people, yeah. how they walk yep. all the time. Yep. Right. How they yeah. just take a beating all the time, how to just get back up and just keep walking mm-hmm. and doing things in grace too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, Jesus said, I do. You watch. Yeah. We talk. Right. Yeah. So I think we don't sometimes discipleship is not right here. And whoever's listening to us, just know, just watch people. If they're consistent, Malcolm is consistent to me. Thanks. Um, Drew Silla was consistent to me. Yeah. My mom disciple me yeah. like in the way she mothered us consistent even now as a grown woman she still yeah. does it i just want to see discipleship yeah. um we all are disciplers of someone or something yeah. right so just pay attention and to your point about the cup watch out how we allow people to pour into us and what we're putting in that cup because yeah. it often goes back out to others as well amen so this week somebody who has discipled you and loved on you and been a dependable presence, give them their flowers. Yeah. Tell them you're thankful. It don't got to be like in this amazing, amazing, Mm -hmm. big, grandiose way. Take them some coffee, take them some tea, Mm -hmm. you know, buy them some, maybe buy them flowers for real, for real. For real, for real. You know, um, but do whatever you can to make sure that they know that they matter. Mm -hmm. Take them to lunch. Because at the end of the day, all of us matter to God. Amen. We hope you enjoyed that episode. Share it. Like it. Like Send it. Send it to somebody. Right. And commit to being a better dependable presence in our world. <laughs> Especially as black folk. Especially I'm as black. black I'm black. I'm black and black and black, black. Hey, I know black is my You're black daughter, if you know it. Shout out. Let amen. me see you show it. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs>